many people willing to serve the church. So we invite you to sing along anytime or just sit back and enjoy. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Nothing was made without him. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The whole world is made through him, except the world doesn't recognize him. But there are others who do believe in him. They run to him from the fields and journey from far away, carrying only hope and curiosity. They didn't know where the road would lead or what others would think of them. But they believe in his name. And to these, he gives the right to become children of God. The word became human and he made his home among us so we could see his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. God made known to us, not on a throne of power, but in a cradle of peace. Emmanuel, God with us. I invite you to stand and sing with us this morning.
Joseph hurries through the streets of Bethlehem, trying to encourage the stubborn donkey along without risking the safety of its precious cargo. Mary looks up and manages a weak smile, but he can see her discomfort is growing. His heart pounds in his chest. Mary's time is coming quickly, and he knows that if he does not find her a room soon, well, he doesn't even want to think about that. What could happen? No midwife, no other women to help. And what does he know about childbirth? But at least he can give her a nice, warm place to stay. Riotous laughter echoes along the alleyways. The town is bursting at its seams. Visitors have come from across the land and swarmed the little town of Bethlehem. And Joseph of Nazareth begins to lose hope of finding his wife a room for the night. And yet, he pounds on another door. Sorry, we are full, responds a voice from inside. Please, sir, it's my wife. I said, we're full, came the harsh reply. Mary cries out and then clasps her stomach while Joseph tightens his grip on the donkey's halter. The baby is coming. Joseph picks up his pace, his sandals noisily striking the sandy streets. He twists and turns through the crowds, trying to find his way back to the town walls. Wasn't there another inn back toward the town gates? Again, Joseph tries another door. Please, sir, I beg you. I have no room, but there's plenty of fresh straw in the barn for my guest animals. I'm sure you can make a suitable bed there for the night. The horses and sheep eye their strange visitors warily as Joseph uses his bare hands to gather the cleanest of the straw towards the back corner of the stall. Here, his wife's resting place for the night. He ties up the donkey and helps Mary down. There's no time to complain about the smell. There's no time to notice the bone-chilling wind that is coming through the cracks in the barn walls. His heart pounds. The baby is coming. Mary struggles through the pain. She grasps his hand and pushes with all her might. A baby's cry pierces the night.
baby's cry has pierced the night. To Mary, it's the sound of cold. It's the sound of hunger. It's the sound of helplessness and dependence. Here was God's promised gift to her. Here was God's gift to the world. To Joseph, the baby's cry is the sound of relief the sound of God providing miracle after miracle on a long and exhausting journey. This baby's cry is the answer to all his prayers for guidance and safety for his wife and this child. To the nation of Israel, this baby's cry is the sound of God's promises fulfilled. It's the voice they've been waiting for, the voice of the king of Judah born in the humblest of surroundings. To the world, this baby's cry is the sound of salvation to any and all who believe. This is the tiny voice of a redeemer who has the power to heal, forgive, and restore. This is Emmanuel, God with us.
say hello to our neighbor we're gonna switch up our worship team just a bit so stretch your legs Merry Christmas Merry Christmas <laughs> Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Advent is a time of expectation, and it echoes Israel's waiting for the promised Messiah. And in the same way, we anticipate with joy celebrating the birth of our Savior, a promise fulfilled. And God has called his people all through scripture to be joyful and to rejoice in all the good things that he has given to you and your household. So take a moment look around just look around we see people who carried the water faithfully for years here and we prayed that god would build his church and now the sound of children fill this place yeah <laughs> new faces fill every row We have a pastor that, although flawed, <laughs> and I have to say that, otherwise his head gets too big. <laughs> Believe me, it's true. <laughs> we have a pastor that stands firm on God's word, and he loves us, and he's a true shepherd, supported by a leadership team that seeks discernment and wisdom. And we have walked through dark valleys here as well. Yet, every time we seek the Lord and ask for his provision, he over delivers. We prayed for passionate ministry leaders here to spring up. And now I see Trina over here. I see Emily and Peter. I see Garrett. And I'm just naming a few because there are so many servants. We've been so blessed here at Sherwood. There are so many servant hearts here. It's wonderful. Have you ever heard the phrase, pray for a Garrett? <laughs> we say that now. We say that now. We need someone in a, in a ministry. We just pray for a Garrett. 
and the Lord over delivers. Um, this week, we had to logistically sort out how we would fit all of our worship ministry teams on the platform and then put a whole other ministry team up there in the middle of the service. This is a great problem to have. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> and while the Lord has built our church in numbers, the real growth is the spiritual growth and the transformation of this community that has been evidenced in good fruit and hearts that want to joyfully bring glory to God. He has been so kind. Our church family committed to intentional prayer this year, and the Lord has heard us, and he's blessed us. So when you hear clapping on Sunday mornings, that's joy being offered up in thankfulness, isn't it? Today at Sherwood Christian Church, we light the joy candle, and we celebrate and we praise God for his faithfulness, for what he has done and what he will do. Hello, everyone. It's an honor for us to stand before the Lord in front of our brethren. And we want to thank our beloved Pastor Ben for uh, being so supportive as we strive to grow in our faith. So yeah, um, we invite everybody to sing with us today the joyful songs um, according to Psalms 100. Shout joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is who, who made us. Amen for that. And we are his. We are his people the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Hallelujah. Amen. So, yeah, please sing with us.
Celebration and glory to the Lord alone. Amen. And those are the headlines this evening. What a depressing society we live in, Jana. And speaking of depressing, let's shoot it over to Shane Bolt for this week's Christmas forecast. Thanks, Jana. It does seem like there's a high pressure system coming our way as we see right here on the map. Speaking of high pressure, Mitch, I never got a response to see if you're gonna be joining me for church this Christmas. What is happening? Looks like Shane just invited Rick to church. Hey, guys, you're live. Um, uh, so, Christmas forecast um, looks like... <laughs> uh, how, how about it, Shane? Is there any snow in the forecast? The weather calls for a silent night, but a holy night. There is a heavenly peace coming in from the north. It just begs the question, Mitch. You want to come to church with me? Back to you. I will, I will have to speak to my wife when we're not on live TV. <laughs> Should we go to commercial? All right, but you better make up your mind because church service fills up quick. What do you say? Come on, come to church with me. Back to you. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Breaking news, seems like Mitch just left baby Jesus out in the cold. <laughs> inviting someone to church. <laughs> we have a uh, carol sing tonight at seven o'clock. We have, yes, please do come. Uh, next Sunday, Christmas Eve, we have a service in the morning at 1030. And we will also have a candlelight service at four o'clock. And then today, following the service for anyone who would like to stay, a chilly lunch will start in the fellowship hall at noon. So you're invited to stay for that as well. So lots, lots going on. All right, let's stand and sing. Pretty sure you all know this one.
seated. Christmas memories. These are the lyrics of a song by Jim Winter. Making angels in the snow, choir singing soft and low, on my old red radio, Christmas memories. Bubble lights upon the tree, shining bright for all to see, setting up the old nativity, Christmas memories. Church bells ringing Christmas Eve, silent night sung by Jim Reeves, Charlie Brown on black and white TV, Christmas memories. Curled up by the fireside while a storm blows wild outside, friends and loved ones dropping by for Christmas memories. Christmas Day will come and go. Years fly by and children grow. Some things change, but some things don't. Those Christmas memories. Those Christmas memories.
There you are. Got the coffees. Land of Goshen, that line was long. <laughs> All right, cup of coffees. Tobias, here's yours with extra goat milk. Had to smell that the whole way here. Thank you so much. And I have a juniper tea. Which one of you guys had the juniper tea with two extra shots of honey, huh? You look like the juniper. And an extra large boba tea for me, because I made the run. And it's all gone. Ira, if you will. Guys, where's all the sheep? Oh, golly gee, then, Eamon. Then maybe I will believe that, what, a gaggle of angels came down? Technically, they're called heavenly hosts. Not the time, Tobias. It's always the time for proper nomenclature. That's the motto I live by. Fine. A heavenly host of little cherubs. No, 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 no. Not little. They were humongous. <laughs> yeah, Ira buckled like a newborn lamb. <laughs> I might have a new concussion. I taste pennies right now. Okay. Come on, ladies! Sweepy! Zeke, we're leaving the sheep. Bathsheba! Bathsheba! The angel told us where to find the Messiah. <sighs> Figures. Figures. Figures the angels would tell you and not me. You want to know why? Because I am always, 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 always left out of things. I am left out every time. That's not true. It is so true. How about the time that I stayed back and I watched the sheep while you all went to go chase those wolves for that farmer, and what did you get in return? A year's worth of free olive oil! You guys remember that olive oil? Remember when we put them on those crackers? Oh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! How about the time that I missed out on that amazing water spot at the Sea of Galilee because I was searching for herbs for Ira's weak stomach? Can we just say my stomach was disappointed in me? Fine. Fine, 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 fine. Then riddle me this. How about the time that my best friend forgot to tell me about Tobias's surprise birthday dinner for some strange oversight of, oh, forgetting that I exist? I am left out of everything. So why shouldn't I be left out of this? The Messiah. I guess he's just leaving me out too. Get off me! Uh, stop it! Not the face! Leave me alone! Stop! Zeke! Stop! Do stop! Zeke! Come here! Listen to me! Ah. Listen to me! Listen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you missed out on so much. That's on us. But today, in the town of David, the Savior was born to, to us. All of us. I can't let you miss out on that. Well, better not keep that baby waiting. Idea, pit stop for more boba teas on the way? <laughs> not a chance. Sing with us this morning.
our hearts to honor the Lord's Supper this morning. I'm going to sing your name. Sing with us or just meditate on the words as we prepare.
from the words of Charles Spurgeon, delivered on December 24th, 1854. He preached on Isaiah 7, 14 to 15, and expounded on the significance of the word Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel, it's a wisdom's mystery, God with us. Sages look at it and wonder. Angels desire to see it. The plumb line of reason cannot reach halfway into its depths. The eagle wings of science cannot fly so high. And the piercing eye of the vulture of research cannot see it. God with us. It is hell's terror. Satan trembles at the sound of it. His legions fly apace. The black-winged dragon of the pit quails before it. Let Satan come to you suddenly, and do you but whisper that word, God with us. Back he falls, confounded and confused. Satan trembles when he hears that name. God with us. It is the laborer's strength. How could he preach the gospel? How could he bend his knees in prayer? How could the missionary go into foreign lands? How could the martyr stand at the stake? How could the confessor acknowledge his master? How could men labor if that one word were taken away. God with us is the sufferer's comfort, is the balm of his woe, is the alleviation of his misery, is the sleep which God gives to his beloved, is their rest after exertion and toil. Ah, and to finish God with us, is eternity's sonnet, is heaven's hallelujah, is the shout of the glorified, is the song of the redeemed, is the chorus of angels, is the everlasting oratorio of the great orchestra of the sky, God with us. Bless the bread and the cup as we commune together. Amen. He was with the Father, and then he was revealed to us. The Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who on the night he was betrayed took the bread, he gave thanks. He broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. We marvel that salvation came to us through a baby born in a stable. Emmanuel, God with us, and we, his people, share in the promise that one day we will sit at the table that he has prepared for us. We will see him face. 
face to face. This is a promise confirmed when Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup, it's the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Reading the words of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and verses 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever.
Christmas announces that our King has come. And with the whole church throughout the world, we join our voices with people of all nations in declaring the blessing, the honor, and the glory, and the power belong to the one sitting on the throne. And to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate. Everyone, Amen. join us. JM, get up here. We can't start, JM. Let's stand, everybody. Come on, Ryan. special services tonight and next week. <laughs>